So this first one, hopefully pretty easy. What is it? Nice. I know that was painful. Minus the other. Okay. Now we're going to have a, probably a lengthy discussion. Unless somebody thinks they have it down, no, no problem. Right? Why? Can we just multiply straight across for multiplying fractions together. determining a fraction of a fraction. Okay. So if we like just multiply the tops, mm -hmm. then we would, for one thing, we wouldn't know what to do because we have two bottom numbers but only one top number. So we have to do something with the bottom number. Huh? Why don't we just multiply? I mean, when we add fractions, we don't add the denominators, right? No, but when we add fractions, we have to have a common denominator. Why? The <laughs> uh, why do we multiply fractions? Why do we I mean, we multiply the numerators and the denominators. That doesn't, you know, that's not the case in, in adding. We just leave the denominators alone. And right? if we're memorizing, memorizing it as a process, then that just doesn't carry through. Do you have anything to add? Well, you technically, half times half is one more. Yeah. So you could multiply the Okay, that's good. Three fifths of a fraction. Of a fraction. Fraction of a fraction. Fraction of a fraction. Okay. So can we make that clear to everyone? Can we translate that? Communicate that information somehow? Why? In order to find three fifths of three fourths, do we just multiply the top numbers and the bottom numbers? I mean, we have a good example of one half times one half times one fourth because clearly one half of one half. I mean, when you when you say that, what are you thinking? What are you picturing? I'm thinking that you can have like a, a smaller fraction because when you can when you have a fraction, it's less than no, less than one. So like point seven, no, like three, nine, three over four, point seven five. Okay. So uh, are you just trying to have when you multiply, are you trying to find that something that's three fourths less uh, less than the original number? Well, you're trying to find it's three fourths of the, you know, three fifths of three fourths of three fourths of three fifths. It's the same. Yeah, it has to be the same. Um, so what you're saying is the result's going to be smaller. Yeah. Multiply two numbers that are smaller than one. The result's going to be smaller than either of the fractions. Exactly. Which is, which is a good observation. If you multiply two numbers together that are less than one, nine tens times one one hundredth. The result is going to be smaller than either one of those. Even though 9 tenths is really close to 1, 1 one hundredth is really far away from 1, the result is going to be even less than 1 one hundredth because you're finding 9 tenths of 1 one hundredth. I think is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Jake? Did you raise your hand again? No. So if we say a half of a half, what do we, can, we, can we visualize that some way? B, take a pie. Okay, take a pie. Let's take a pie. Okay. And we cut it in half. But no, it. there's only half left of the pie. Okay, so we'll just concentrate on, should I shade in what we have or we don't? What we have. What we have, okay. What we have. We have a half. And you want to give two people the equal amount. You want to get, you want to so divide like you want it split into the, that in split, half. Okay, split it in two. So we'll use black to represent the half of a half. Looks like a four, right? Is that the best we can do? To say it looks like a four? We can put a, a, a little square in that side to make it nine and three, so it makes it perfect. Okay, well, I mean, how do I know that? <laughs> how do I know that? Well, we just, do we know? Or not? Okay, I mean, we can kind of do, we can <laughs> just know. We just know from uh, the uh, math, That it's 90 degrees. It doesn't, it doesn't exactly have to be in the scale, right? But that little square just tells you it's, it's a right angle there. Okay. It's, it's getting closer, right? 
quite tell me why, for any two fractions that I want to multiply together, why I multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. I don't just multiply the numerators. I don't just multiply the denominators. Uh, I don't multiply them across, as as often I see people try and do. Like I see people try to do like three times five and four times three, and that, that's the answer. Right? That doesn't make sense. No. Probably only because you know what you're supposed to do, and that's not what you're supposed to do. But you don't know why you do what you're supposed to do. What do you do? I, I think I think cross multiply. I, I no, you did. Right you cross multiply. Did it the right way. Even why that's the right way. Because cross multiply doesn't make sense. Okay. It's a little bit circular. It, it doesn't make sense in this in this sense. It doesn't make sense. Start simple. I'll just make one a fraction. Yeah, and so half of one, or half times one, uh -huh. is half. And so, okay. because, like, the simplest way. So, at least, uh, is um, an example of the multiplying straight across that we for sure know is correct. It works, yeah, I mean, it follows the rule. I mean, no, it has to be true, because one half times one is definitely one half. But, uh, you know, if I was a cross multiplier, I would be doing it wrong, but if I was a cross multiplier, and one times two is two, one times one is one, I, I can't really. Well, how do you know, because if you were a cross multiplier, how do you know the ones weren't supposed to be in the bottom, the twos weren't supposed to be in the bottom? That's a good point. Like, if you want to cross multiply, how do you know, like, if you go like this, one times two, gives you two. Well, if I switch the order of multiplication, the multiplication doesn't matter the order, right? If I did one half times one over one, then one times one would be in the denominator, and two times one would be in the denominator. Like, this cross-multiplication thing would be really problematic. It would be like something. quadratic formula. We'd have two answers. You'd have two answers. We can't have two answers for one multiplication. Well, that's not quadratic. Well, that's not a multiplication. Well, yes, it kind of is. Well, why, not why, can't we have, why can't we have more than one answer for a multiplication? Uh, well, it's a good question. And the answer is because we don't want that. We want, when, we, when we do this operation called multiplication, we want to have two numbers multiplied to make one other number. When we talk about real numbers, that's what we want. That's how we, we want to multiply non-real numbers? Uh, sure, we have imaginary numbers, multiply those together. Um, and if we say, why can't we have a multiple answers for one multiplication problem? Uh, well, multiplication is just repeated addition. Three times five is just three plus three plus three plus three plus three, right? There's only one way to do that, to add five threes together. Oh, I could do, I could switch up the order of threes. You still get the same, <laughs> right? Um, all right, let me see if I can explain the why of that, why we multiply the numerators the numerators and the denominators times the denominators. Let's take the example of 3 fourths. What does the fraction 3 fourths mean? It means 3 quarters of a whole. 3 quarters of a whole. Okay? So we've cut a whole into pieces. How many pieces? Three. Four, Four pieces. Four total pieces. And what we have, what we'll shade in, is three of them. So we'll cut it into fourths. That's what a fourth is. It's, it's a thing that uh, four of them makes up a whole. And we have three of them. One, two, three. Okay, there's three fourths. And without getting hung up, hung up on the uh, fact that this next part is kind of an, 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 a strange thing. To say three fourths times three fifths is to say what is three fifths of three fourths? Right? Even that is like, how is multiplying two fractions together getting you three fifths of something? But we're ignoring that. Three fifths of three fourths. Okay. Well, three fifths of this thing. How are we going to figure that out? We've got to turn it into fifths instead of fourths. Okay, but we can't turn into fifths very easily, right? Like turn fourths into fifths. 
You see what I mean? Yeah. You gotta turn it into something, like turn these pieces into something that is at the same time. Fifteenths. No. Twentieths. No, yes. It's, it's gotta be common. It's gotta be a number that is divisible by uh, four. four and also five, right? So that we can take the whole and cut it into four pieces and five pieces, right? Equally. So we're basically gonna try and find the, the common uh, the common number for both of them. For both numbers the five and the and, and the four. You gotta find the the best common uh, denominator for it. Well almost, but you don't want to get confused because common denominators would be for adding and subtracting fractions, right? Uh, yeah. So it's not that we need to turn each of these fractions into a thing, but that the result needs to be um, like say it kind of confusingly. I need to be able to count these fourths in a fifths kind of a way. Yeah. Right. So here's what I'll do. I'll just take each piece and I'll cut it into five pieces. Right? I'll just take each piece and cut it into five pieces. This is the denominators being multiplied together. Right? All the to all total number of pieces. I'll cut every one of them into five pieces. So I'll cut them going this way with a different color. I thought I had a different color. Um, try and cut it into five equal pieces. Cut it this other way, five pieces each. Okay. So now the whole thing is cut into how many pieces? 20 pieces. Okay. That's what we're doing when we multiply the denominators together. We're really just saying, like, I have now, instead of saying that this whole is in five pieces or in four pieces, you know, to make up the whole, let's just say it's in 20 pieces. So that I could count it in thirds and I could count it in fifths, or fourths or in fifths. Right. So now I want to count three fifths of this three fourths. Okay. So uh, I, you know, each of these is now being cut into five pieces. Okay. And I want to be able to count three fifths of all of that. Right. Three out of every five of each of these pieces. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three. Right. Right. So we want of each of these three pieces, each of these three pieces is like cut into fifths, and in each one of those we're gonna count three of those five, right? Three of those five. So all together we're gonna have each one of each three. We're going to count three of those five pieces, or three times three is nine. Okay. So by multiplying the denominators together, we're saying the new whole is not cut into fourths or fifths. It's cut into twentieths, okay. so that we can then go to so each of these. Uh, yeah, that we can count three on each of those pieces. Isn't that basically the same way that in like one of those Chinese calculator things built on the A uh, abacus? Yeah. Isn't that basically the same thing? I would, I would say no, unless you like presented it to me in some way that I'm not thinking. Huh. I'm You're just, just thinking of it differently. Yeah, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just saying I know you're trying Maybe you could, if, if you could think of it. Maybe I'm just like stuck in a, the way that I've always thought of of an abacus. Maybe I just can't get out of that paradigm. Instead of making it, um, you know, like a. Uh, an abacus and go just like one, two, three, four, you can make it into fraction form. X and fraction form. Perhaps you could. You could we would have to I think talk more at length about that. But it's an interesting thought. So if we take this and, and we look at the same kind of a picture, here's the whole draw a little bit bigger so I can cut it into uh, really, really tiny pieces. Uh, we're looking at four sevenths of that whole, right, to start with. So we'll cut it into sevenths, uh, Seven. Okay, so we are looking at four of those sevenths, and now we want to count three fifths of those. So we do the same thing. Yeah. Make it into five. Right. Um, cut them into fifths, right? But we want to cut these into fifths and then count up three fifths of the small portion that we have. The three fourths. Or the, sorry, the four sevenths that we have. So we're going to cut each one of them into five pieces, 
so that we can see what three of those five would amount to. So altogether, those, those pieces are this size. They are the size such that 35 of them make up the whole, right? 35 of them make up the whole. This is what this number means. It means uh, number of pieces in the whole. But since we're only taking, uh, that's just the bottom, uh, bottom denominator. Right, that's just saying how big the pieces are. But three, and that was three, that means we're only taking three of the each little section yeah. instead of total five. Yeah. So then you're gonna get 12. Right. For each of the four pieces, we're gonna count three out of the five, right? Yeah. So how many of those 30 fifths do we have? Well, there's four of these. We're counting up three of them. So we have three times four, 12 of them. 12 pieces that are the size 30 fifth, which means 30 fifth, 35 of them are gonna add up to make the whole. Twelve thirty fifths. Then you can simplify. Then we can simplify that to what? Okay. Um, so now that it would be, it, it's it's more simple. It's not like a terribly simple thing to to think about this. We had to look at it three or four. I see why we would multiply straight across when we multiply fractions. Um, now this, if I tried to explain to you why we multiply straight across when there's x's and y's in this thing, it would be nearly impossible to like put together a, a coherent so thing. Basically, basically with the x's and y's, you're basically just simplifying it to a smaller thing. So you get the 5 and then x squared. Well, we're using what we know about fractions already that when we multiply them, we multiply them straight across. Yeah. And we're just applying it to all fractions. You can see by the, by the fractions that are just made of numbers, why I would multiply them straight across. And now we're applying it to all fractions, even when they have these, these, num these the letters in them, these variables. And we just go ahead and continue to use that property of fractions to multiply straight across. Now, if you think this is a waste of your time to think why, why do we have to multiply straight across? Why would we multiply straight across? Um, it's not. Okay. The more questions you can answer why, if you can ask a question why and answer it, okay. then when another like more complicated problem comes along, it's less complicated than it is for someone who has never asked why. And this from experience from all angles, student and teacher, uh, it's, it's better for the student who can answer the why question. Why wouldn't I kill it? It's a wasp. Catch it in a cup and move it outside. It's a wasp, but it'll sting you just because. Yeah, eat it, eat it. If it was a bit, yeah, if it was a bubble, we'd eat it. Ah! Oh, eat it. Now I'm afraid. It's gonna sting us. Give him a hand. 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 Give him a I don't care. It's probably it's something that they get you. Now he smells bad. Thank you. If he, if he gets yes. <laughs> um, it's not the moment. All right, so we accept that there is this thing about fractions, this rule now, that hopefully makes sense when the, when the fractions are made of only numbers. You multiply straight across when you multiply. You multiply fractions together, you multiply straight across. Okay? And it would be great if fifth grader were to ask you as you're helping him with their homework, why do we multiply straight across? You could say, well, let's, let's make it very simple. Let's start with maybe like a half and a half, or maybe a little bit harder than that, a half and you know, a third. You know, start with some fairly simple fractions and explain to them why. Why do we do that? Okay, so here we go. Multiply straight across. Straight across, you get 5 times x times x is 5x squared. Here, 2y times y. So that one or the next one that we're about to do? Yeah. I didn't know whether you take a two and then take it times three, or you just take two and then parenthesize x minus and then minus three. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really positive. So we want to understand, what do you multiply across here? 
Should we distribute the two, or should we just multiply the two times the x? Distribute it, right? X minus three times two is the same as, say, like x minus three uh, plus another x minus three. And two times seven is the same as adding it to itself. We want two of these. What does that amount to? Two x's. X plus x is two x. Negative three plus negative three is negative six. If we don't distribute it to the three, or you don't distribute it to the x, we haven't multiplied x minus three times two. We have not doubled it. We only doubled some of it. You gotta do the whole thing. The whole thing. It'd be kind of like saying, if you were to do five times six, what does that mean I multiply five times all of the six, or do I just multiply five times the two uh, and not the four? I'm just put four in there. Should I multiply by just the two and not the four? No, I need to multiply by all of the six. The six is made up as made up of two plus four. I would have to multiply the two by two or the by five and the four by five, and then I could add them together. Right. Everything needs to get five times as big. Everything here needs to get twice as big. So twice as big of x, twice as big of negative three, and three times five is fifteen. So it's not so much do I distribute or don't I. It's Multiplying two times x minus three, what would that even mean? It would mean I have two of these. Two x's and two negative threes. Multiplied by five, I would need five x's or five negative threes. Five x minus fifteen. If I don't multiply both of them by two, I'm not multiplying the entire thing by two. I don't have twice as much of everything that I have to start with. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's multiply these together. Okay, so if we multiply these straight across, yes, from the previous example, to put it plainly, yeah, you distribute stuff from this numerator to this one because we're going to multiply the two things together. If we don't, it's, if we don't distribute, we haven't multiplied it, right? It's a, not as simple as it can go without going into more detail. Um, so I'm going to multiply x by x plus 6. I am multiplying x by x plus 6. That x, so I get what? X, uh, x squared plus 6x. There we go, over 60. Yeah. Cancel the 60 with the 6. We'll talk about simplification here in a little bit. Um, okay, we're going to multiply straight across. We're going to multiply 2y by 3x plus y squared. So, what's the first thing that we get? 6 times x times y plus 2y to the third over 45. Okay. Now we're going to multiply x minus 5 times x plus 3. And distribute everything to everything. So we get? Yeah. There we go. Cancel the 15s? Huh? The answer would be no. Lastly, we get what? Uh huh. Yeah. Cancel the x squares? Cancel the x? Uh, cancel the 2s? Because there's so many things to try and cancel out, maybe I should tell you. So multiplication, fairly a simple thing to do, but to, to execute, to multiply straight across. Keeping in mind that if I multiply, say, x minus 5 times x plus 3, I need to distribute everything in here to everything in there. x squared minus 2x minus 3. So now we're going to talk about simplification. This is really what I wanted to get into. That's why we even multiply fractions together, because I want to talk about simplification and the mistakes that often get when simplifying fractions. So, uh, in the time that I've been talking about that, I'm sure I simplified it. So it simplifies to what? One third. 
two-thirds. Okay, so the question is again, just like with why do we multiply straight across and multiply fractions? Why does six ninths cancel or simplify to two-thirds? Oh, gosh, no. Nothing more? Okay, so let's get back to uh, the why. The why of simplifying a fraction. Okay. Why Why does six ninths simplify to two thirds? Because when you take a when you take oh, a, a whole like a whole three over three, it will turn up into six ninths. So if I were to multiply this by three over three, it would turn into six ninths. True, because six ninths is the same as two thirds times three thirds, right? Yeah, just one. It's the same, and this is just one. Yeah, yeah. They're the same. So, hey, you know, why express it as six ninths when three divided by three is one? And two thirds times one is just two thirds. That's perfect. That's an expert. That's ninja level <laughs> stuff right there. Because it's not using ambiguous terms, it's using like mathematical concepts. Things like three divided by three is one. Like that's a mathematical, uh, let's say, uh, Result. Right? 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we could either write it as 2 thirds times 3 thirds and then say 3 thirds is 1, or we could write it as 6 ninths. But why would we? If we could write it using smaller numbers, 2 thirds instead of 6 ninths. That's very good. Uh, it gets right into harder. So anytime we want to be able to cancel something out, we need to be able to do this. You need to be, read, be able to basically write it as the simpler fraction times one. And if we can't do that, if we couldn't multiply these two together and get the original, then there's no justification for simplifying it. Okay? Let's simplify this fraction, if possible. Simplify. What? Can this fraction simplify? Simplify? No. Yeah. Yeah. I say yes. yes. Um. Wait. Wait. Can I go with someone new? Oh. Kyler. Um. When you write it out, five times x, and if you take x squared and write it as x times x. So we write it as five over x yeah. times x over x. Um. X over x is one for any number. So I might stop plugging a number you wanted for x. Uh, will come out to be 1. Right, 5 divided by x, x divided by 10, whatever. And then we just have what left? 5 divided by x. Which is a lot simpler. Like if I need to plug in an x, it's a lot easier to divide 5 by x than to take 5, multiply it by x, take x, square it, divide the two things. The multiplying by x in the numerator and the multiplying by the x in the denominator is kind of uh, redundant. It makes it extra work for us. So what are we canceling out here? What are these two things called? Common what? The numerator and denominator have this in common. What is it? What is it called? A factor. A factor. A factor is a thing that multiplies by another thing. That's as simple and, and as profoundly as you can put it. A factor is a thing that multiplies by another thing. And that other thing that it multiplies by happens to also be a factor. So if the numerator and denominator have common factors, then you can cancel out those common factors, and a factor is something that you multiply, so those things that we cancel out must be multiplied, okay? Not just added or subtracted, it's gotta be a common factor, and a good explanation of why that needs to be is because we can rewrite it as two fractions, and one of the fractions becomes one, okay? So let's apply what we've learned so far to this fraction. Let's see if we can simplify this. Here's the thing that you shouldn't do, that I hope that if you did do, you learn now not to do. 
And not because I told you not to do it and it violates some rule, but because there's no way to justify it mathematically. Canceling out this 2x and getting 3? Yeah, it can't just be. Yeah. Why? Yeah. We just, uh, we just confirmed the, uh, the, the, the weeping kitten <laughs> theorem. Okay? For the stronger version of this theorem, something worse happens to the kitten. But I chose not to use that one. Is that a kitten died or something? I'll no. say. So, I mean, why? Why are you canceling out the 2x? Why are you crossing, putting a, a line through the 2x? Why are you doing that? Because they're the same. Because they're the same? Because they look the same? Because they have the same shape? Is that what we're supposed to look for? No. Yes. Because they're the if same. If two numbers are, are shaped the same, you can cross them out. Oh, fine. Is that how it works? Crossing them out because they have the same numerical value. Okay, they do. Okay, but what is canceling out? <coughs> canceling out is pretty ambiguous. Well, it means that there's a number that is being divided by a number of the same value. Okay. So one. Yeah, one times something is the same. So Let's it's see if this comes out to be three. If we put a number in. Four x. Cut for like two. Two times a two. Three over two times two. Just plug two in for x. Seven. Seven. seven over four. And that seven over three. four is three then. So, so it's not. Clearly, this is not true. It might help if you put parentheses around the 2x plus 3 in the numerator. And that just might help you. No, not just around the 2x plus 3, just around the uh, Like that? How does that help us? It makes it clear that 2x plus 3 is one thing. You can't yeah. just break it up. 2x plus 3 is a thing. And, and, and that thing, if we can cancel out the 2x, let's go back. If we can cancel something out, it's because we can write the numerator as five times that thing we want to cancel out, and the denominator as, well, as something times that thing that we want to cancel out, or here. We can write it as that thing we want to cancel out times something else, and that thing that we want to cancel out times something else. Can we do that in this case? We need to be able to write it as 2x times something, over 2x times, well, in the, the case of the denominator, times one, it is the 2x that you want to cancel. But in the numerator, can you give me something that you can multiply 2x by and come out with 2x plus 3? Whatever is in the, in the parentheses, you'd have to distribute 2x to, right? Which means that whatever this is would wind up with at least an x, if not an x squared or an x to the third. We get that x as a factor of it. And well, there's just no way to make that. Like, we put a 1, 2x times 1 is 2x, but what do you put here? So you wind up with 3. Plus 3? What's 2x times 3? 6x. Uh, so you can't. No, you cannot. Because there's no way to write it as. If you get 2, you get 3. Eventually, we would like to write it as 2x over 2x. Right? This is, like I said, that there is a reason why we were multiplying fractions to start with. Because to simplify a fraction, we have to be able to write it as a fraction times another fraction, and that other fraction is 1. If this were possible, then we need to be able to write it as 2x times something, and that something would have to be equal to 2x plus 3. But we're finding that's not possible. Um, and then we, uh, we violate the uh, weeping kitten theorem. One thing I saw somebody doing was Are these the same? Yeah. Okay. No. Oh, I know. No. Nope. Two x and two x would make it four uh, x squared. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding them. Oh, so you're adding. multiplying them. Oh. I'm adding them. Yeah, this is the same. Yeah, we'll go over some addition and subtraction yeah. and fractions in a minute, but yeah, it is we, we know we need the common denominator, right? So yes. They have the same denominator. When we add fractions, we have the same denominator. We add the numerators together. Yeah. And then leave the denominator the same, or like maybe the seemingly matching reason. So yeah, I could like, this is like the result of adding these two together. So I could just go the other way. And this was 2x divided by 2x. One. 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 
So you could do 1 plus 3 over 2x. And this is an equivalent expression. Okay? So, you know, it's no longer a single fraction, so whether we simplify that fraction, I don't know if, you know, if you like that better or, or if, you, if you don't like it as much. Um, maybe it's a little bit less work. It's 1 plus 3 divided by 2x. There's definitely not a way to just cancel things out. So the point I'm trying to make overall is stop canceling things out because they have the same shapes. Okay? But because they're the same shape, doesn't mean you can put lines through them. Like think about the rule you're, is the precedent you're setting there that, that you may like tell a, a fifth grader to follow. If these things, numbers, expressions, term, have the same shape, because this is what you're basing it on, they just look the same. If they have the same shape, you can put lines through them and not write them anymore, is basically what you're saying. Like, there's no mathematical thing going on. You're just saying, put lines through them and don't write them anymore. Which is uh, not solid. It doesn't work mathematically. It's not mathematical. The thing's mathematically, well, okay, so maybe by some weird coincidence it works sometimes. That, that does happen, but in general it doesn't work. So what we need to do is think about it more when we ask, can I do this? Ask a deeper question, why have I ever done this? Why can I simplify a fraction? It gets down to what are we actually canceling out? What does that mean? Uh, it means that, that I can rewrite this fraction in the case of uh, x squared plus, let's say x to the third plus 2x squared plus 5x over 3x. Can I cancel this x or this x? No. No. I don't just cancel things with parts of the numerator. I cancel common factors between the numerator and the numerator. If that's what I want to do, if I, if I say I want to cancel a factor of x, then the numerator has to have a factor of x, x times something, it needs to be able to be written that way. And the denominator needs to be written as x times something. And then this essentially becomes its own fraction. And that fraction is 1. So I'll just multiply by 1 and I can eliminate that. Can I write the numerator as x times something? x times what? Three. There we go. That's equivalent to the numerator over here. The denominator, x times what? Three. 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 There's the three. And now what I have is two fractions being multiplied together. This one is x over x. What's x divided by x? One. 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 And the simpler version would be x squared plus 2x plus 5 over 3. Now this is quadratic. It is. It is a quadratic in the numerator. Actually, I think it's a quadratic. So I'm going to try and cancel something out because it's a common factor, which means I can write. If x is a factor of the numerator, then it needs to be able to be written as x times something. And if you can't write it like that, if you can't factor out an x, or factor out whatever you're trying to factor out, then you can't do it. And there's no mathematical basis for crossing out these things that are the same shape. Okay. Um, let's, let's skip that one. Let's go to add subtract so that we have enough time to play this game. Start with uh, two thirds plus uh, three thirds. Try to use because I'm gonna. I'm about to ask why do we do what we do when we add these fractions together. So to add these together, we need to. Find a common denominator. So if I were to say not remember this, okay, this is a bad spot to be in. You don't want to add, you don't, you know, get common denominators. You don't want to get common denominators because you remembered to do it, right? You want to do it because you know why you're supposed to. So if I were to add these together, I forget to get common denominators, so I go to add them together. What would I would I get uh, I think the uh, most common answer by like a five kind of like when we multiply fractions, okay? If you don't think about it, then you, know, you have no reason to think that this isn't correct. But it's not correct. 
So instead of asking, you know, why is that not correct, I'll ask, why do we get common denominators? Why do you have to get a common denominator between two fractions when you have them? Yeah. Um, uh, they're trying to fit two pieces. Like if you look at it, like the actual pieces, like if three fourths is like four pieces and like three. Okay, of them. So let's draw that out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, let's start with thirds because this thirds is first, yeah. and then we'll yeah, do thirds fourths. first. Fourths you're trying to. This. You are trying to put two of those thirds. Two of those thirds. And fit them into a single, or er, fit them with three fourths, and it just doesn't. Fit them with so that you can. Uh, yeah. So like you can like yeah. add it with that. Put them together as a, a big group of somehow. something. And no matter which way you look at it, doesn't look like it's going to come out pretty. So you need to like divide them into smaller pieces uh -huh. to so that they eventually do find a piece where they both can fit into. Okay, so I want to cut these pieces into smaller pieces and these pieces into smaller pieces. So Until they're the same size pieces. Until they're the same size. Or another way to put that is so that it takes just as many to make up the hole over here as it does to make the hole over here. Right? But somehow that number like matches up with thirds and with fourths. If I were to cut this into uh, sixths, that'd be smaller pieces that also can like it would line up with the thirds. But sixths doesn't line up with fourths. Like this, there's not a number of fourths that's a nice round number of sixths as well. Right? So we need to find a number that. Uh, you know, we can, we can divide this into, we can divide this into, but also we can group some of them together and, and make the same number of thirds, and make two thirds. And we can group some of these together, same size pieces, uh, and, and have something equivalent to three fourths. The easiest thing to do would just be, well, this is cut into three pieces, and this is cut into four pieces, so we'll cut each of these into three pieces, and each of these into four pieces. Well, then that means I'm taking three, and if I'm cutting each one of those into four, I am, how many pieces will I have? Three times four each, about uh, three groups of four. So I'll cut this into four each. So now altogether, the, the number of pieces it takes to make the hole is how many? Twelve. It takes twelve. So I want this to require twelve pieces, but with those 12 pieces to, you know, line up perfectly with these fours, which I will if we cut these into thir thirds each. And then you gotta change the top number. Because you're I mean, making that, uh, you're making it into 12 pieces. That means you're gonna need more pieces for the top one, and I want it to be the same. Right, right. So you're gonna multiply this by or four, and this by three, so that they can both be made up of the same size pieces. So we're, comparing, we're just comparing apples and oranges, basically, right? Comparing the same thing to the same thing. Well, how the many size. twelfths do we have? Well, we have two of these thirds. Each of these has been split up into four pieces each. So here in the numerator, we have two groups of four. One group of four, another group of four, two times four. <coughs> up here we have Three groups to start with, three groups that are, you know, three groups of, of fourths. And uh, each of those three groups has been cut into three, so we have three groups of three. So when we want the whole to be, uh, well, split up into the same size pieces for both. And then we just, it's a matter of counting how many of those pieces we have in each case. We know it's going to be a whole one. That's another thing that tells us five sevenths is too small, right? Yeah. I mean, just look at it. Two thirds is obviously bigger than a half. Three fourths, obviously bigger than a half. So it's just by really rough estimates, something bigger than a half plus something bigger than a half is bigger than one, right? Is five sevenths bigger than one? No, it's not. It's, it's obviously smaller than one. So that is just telling us that can't be right. It could not possibly be right. It's, to put it simply, we find common denominators so that we are comparing the same size things, same size pieces. If you look at it like mathematically, we would have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing because we don't want to change how big this is. We don't want to change how big two thirds is. Right? Like where it would land on the number line. On the number line, two thirds and eight twelfths 
would be in the same place in the number line, would take just as much of the pi up. Okay. Same thing with 3 fourths and 9 twelfths. 3 fourths and 9 twelfths would take up just exactly the same amount of pi, would land in the same place on the number line. We haven't changed how big they are. We do that by multiplying by, what is this number worth? One. One. This one is also worth one. One. We haven't changed how big these numbers are. But we have changed the size pieces that they're made of and the number of pieces it takes. Does that make sense? What size the pieces are and how many pieces it takes, or how many pieces we have. So we have 17 twelfths. It's better to keep it in a mixed number, or do you want to put one over five twelfths? One over five twelfths? I mean, one, just one and then five, one twelfth. That is a mixed number. This is an improper fraction. I mean, improper fraction. Uh, is it better? I would say it's better to leave it as an improper fraction if you're going to use it for something. But when you're when I'm doing just a regular answer? If you were to give an answer, I guess it would depend. If this were the answer, like the number of uh, gallons or something like that, I probably want to know that I have one and five twelfths of a gallon. Rather than being told, you know, go and, and pour me 17 twelfths of a gallon. I'd rather know that, okay, I got a whole gallon, and then I'll figure out how to get five twelfths of a gallon more, right? Yeah. So if it's an amount of something, like in real life, we probably want to do a mixed number. If we're going to immediately use this number to go in and put it to another calculation, so like multiply it, add it. Yeah, and then 17 times 12, and then you take it times five and stuff. You just got Times five. If you're times plugging in some other formula, you're going to want it in a while. If you, want to, if you want to do something else, you can keep, keep it in there. Improper fraction. I mean, I get yeah. it. Leave it like that if you're going to plug it into some other equation or whatever. Because right. if you add it, you're going to want to have a mixed number. So you just get a common denominator, add the numerators together. If you're going to multiply it, you just want to get it as an as a improper fraction so you can multiply straight across. So it's more useful this way, but the information is better if you have a mixed number. Right. Okay. So. Um, So again, it would be really difficult for me to try and explain to you why we get common denominators when now we have fractions that have these variables. So it, is, it is helpful to be able to go back to numbers, just plain old simple numbers and fractions, have an explanation of why you would need to get common denominators. So that when you're looking at a problem like this, you don't ask yourself, do I add the numerators and the denominators together? Do the denominators stay the same? Why don't I do anything with the denominators? Why don't they get added together? Go back, run through this exp explanation real quick, and say, oh, it's because the, the bottom number is how many of the pieces it takes to make a whole, right? how big the pieces are, and the top number is just how many of those pieces I have. So I wouldn't want to add the denominators together. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. Let's play the game now. I won't be running class today. What? Is our common denominator? Two. Two x to the fourth. Two x to the fourth. My, my answer will be for the denominator of two x to the fourth. So what will I multiply this by to get two x to the fourth? X squared. And this by what? Two. By two. This by two. This by x squared. Whatever it takes, whatever you need to multiply by your same denominator. Oh. So we get uh, 5x squared over 2x squared plus 6 over, oh, sorry, 2x to the uh, fourth down here. Uh, 2x squared plus 6 over 2. equals 5x squared plus 6 over 2x to the fourth. Should I cancel out this 2 with the 6? Why not? The 
5 x squared. You have to factor out a 2 from everything, right? The numerator, if you're going to cancel out this 2, right, you're going to cancel out, a, well, you'd have to have a factor of 2 there. Okay. But, of course, we can't write it like that. What we would have to do to do that, to cancel out these 2s, they would have to both be factors in both the numerator and denominator. And clearly, the denominator it is. But in the numerator, if you try to write something in here that you can multiply by 2, you could do it with a 6. You can have a 3 there. 2 times 3 is 6. What about how do you multiply by 2 and wind up with 5x squared? Huh? Yeah, you could. It is possible. 5 halves x squared. 2 times 5 halves is, is 5. Right, the 2's cancel. 2 in the, in the numerator, denominator cancel. But now what do we have? We have 5 halves x squared plus 3 over x to the fourth. And uh, I think it could be argued that, like what we were trying to do by canceling out these twos was to make the fractions simpler. Do you feel like it's simpler here or no? No. Yeah, so it's, it's possible. We could cancel out that factor of two. But I would argue this is nicer. This looks nicer than this. Just have a fraction of a fraction. Can that be simplified? Before you say yes or no, just uh, give you a second to think about it for a minute. When I cancel, or when I simplify 6 ninths, I'm really saying, uh, let's see, I'm really saying that 6 is the same as 2 times 3, and 9 is the same as 3 times 3, and 3 divides 3 and makes 1. So I'm not just canceling out these common factors. Saying this factor divided by this factor is 1, and so I'll just go ahead and, and let that be 1, and then I'll write the simpler version. So if we're going to cancel anything here, if that's at all possible, we need to have it written as something times something else. Is it possible to rewrite this so it's something times something else? Mm -hmm. Not in the immediately uh, obvious way. Gavin, did you? You can write out the x squared as x times x, but it doesn't really change too much. And you can no, you're right. I mean, it is a little bit in the right direction because we're thinking it's got to be yeah. multiplication. But then we're too much. And then you can write out the five x as right five times yeah, x, but the x is two times. Yeah, it doesn't change too much. And the same with the thirteen x. Yeah, because then we're not really taking the numerator and writing it as like something times something. No, we're writing it as something plus something times something. So it's not that the whole numerator yeah, has not different. had a factor drawn out of it. But if I write it that way, does that like make you think of anything? Make you think of a way that you could rewrite x squared plus 5x plus 6? Can you, I'm just thinking, could you take the x times the x plus, uh, and then plus uh, 5 times the x and then put plus 6 and the uh, out on the other side of the but well, we don't want anything like a plus on the outside of the parentheses. We want the numerator to be something times something. Just like we want this to be 2 times 3, not 2 times 2 plus 2. We want to break it down into its factors. Can this be factored? Have you written as something times something else? Five and six? No. Wait a minute. It can't do it because it's a 13. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
plus 3, plus 10. There we go. So now, to, to make this a longer than it has to be, but uh, so that it really displays why this implies, we now have x plus 3 over x plus 3 times this other fraction, x plus 2 over x plus 10. I could multiply these together. I'd wind up with x squared plus 5x plus 6. I can multiply these together. I wind up with x squared plus 13 plus 30, 13x plus 30. But if I leave it like this, x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 is what? 1, right? Anything divided by itself is 1. And now the simpler, simpler form, x plus 2 over x plus 10. Canceling out common factors. OK. Um, so we got this game for some reason. It's called Brussels sprouts. I don't know why. But here's how every game starts. Two x's. OK? So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 little ends. Yeah. Little ends like that. So each person takes a turn moving. Here's what a move looks like. Connect two ends, and then draw a line creating two new ends like this. Oh. Connect these two, or any two that you want. And then just like there's these ends here, you're going to create two new ends. Okay. <laughs> so connect two little stubs, and then right in the middle, draw another thing like this, right through the middle. Uh, or anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the middle. Okay. Okay. You don't know all the rules yet. Next person does the same thing, just connects any two ends. So any two ends you want, including the new ones that we just made. OK, so you violated a rule that I haven't explained yet. You can't cross over lines that already exist. So undo that. That's good. So, so you can't cross over lines that your, your opponent makes. Can I connect to an end that's already been ended? Yep. There's not an end anymore. Right. You didn't cross there you go. He, he has uh, executed and moved uh, perfectly. All right. We can't go that. It's an interesting observation. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to play this game and make observations. And I want you to make observations and ask questions that can be answered mathematically, with numbers, and logic. Okay, so the game is over, okay, when no more moves can be made. Basically, when there's not two ends that you can connect anymore. Can you go around other lines? It's like having my curve around. Sure. Here, Gordon and I will keep playing until the game is over. I'll choose to do these, and I'll draw that. Okay. So how do we decide the weights? Whoever is stuck without a move to make. You're going to win. Why am I going to win? Because it's going to end. It's, there's a finite number of moves. You know, no, it's gonna, are there? Uh, it's going to continue going <coughs> on. Just like a no, You got to put another thing. I wonder why it's called the same. Oh, no. It looks like a Brussels Um <laughs> And now, you see any moves I can make? Or did you just want? Nope. I don't see any moves. Like, I don't see any. Like, here are ends, but none of the ends are, like, I can't. Connect any two without going over a line, which is not, you know, I can't do that. So. Every, FYI, everyone, uh -huh. don't be the first one to start. So, Gordon thinks it matters if you're the first person or the second person to go. Yeah. Okay. Like but maybe if we play this game differently, those are the things I want you to do. Think about things that can be answered using some uh, some logic, some some reasoning, some numbers. Let's play again. 